Today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Sierra Jogan was a young woman who had a hold on everyone's hearts. Her infectious happiness and humorous spirit made her the center of everyone's world. She had a spunky and sassy personality that brought immeasurable joy and happiness to those around her. Even when she made mistakes, she had a special way of making her mom smile. As Sierra grew older and entered high school, she continued to exude her adventurous nature. She fearlessly embraced new experiences, one of which was playing volleyball. Whether on the court or off, she displayed a level of comfort and confidence that was truly remarkable. On July 19, 2016, the Juggin family returned from their vacation, and Sierra had some exciting plans for the fall semester at the University of Toledo. She had decided to study abroad, and her mother wanted to have a conversation with her about it. However, Sierra, being a very athletic person, had recently purchased a bike, but had not yet had the chance to really use it. So whenever she found time, she was eager to take a ride. Sierra left the house looking cute with her hair up in a ponytail and wearing shorts and a tank top. She mentioned to her mother that she was heading to her boyfriend Josh's house, which was located 7-12 miles away from their own. Her mother acknowledged her plans and said she would see her later. At around 1.05 p.m., Josh, Sierra's boyfriend, made a phone call to Sierra's home. He was concerned about Sierra's whereabouts as he had tried to reach her several times, but her phone was going straight to voicemail. When Josh asked Sierra's mom if she was home, she replied that Sierra was not there. Josh informed Sierra's mom that Sierra had left his house a little before 7 hours p.m. and he hadn't seen or heard from her since then. Sierra's mom immediately sensed something was wrong as Sierra always answered her phone. Her first instinct was to reach out to her parents, Sierra's grandparents, who live nearby. However, Sierra's grandma informed her that Sierra was not with them. Worried about Sierra's well-being, her family and Josh embarked on a search mission to find her. Sierra's mother wasted no time and quickly got into her car, determined to scour every possible location. With a sense of urgency, she diligently examined every nook and cranny she came across, including the sides of the road. Meanwhile, Sierra's aunt joined the search effort, accompanied by her husband and son. They too suspected that Sierra might have been involved in an accident, possibly hit by a vehicle. As time passed, the worry escalated. The thought of Sierra being injured, perhaps with a broken leg, weighed heavily on their hearts. Despite their tireless efforts and exhaustive search, they were unable to find any sign of Sierra. Sierra's mom arrived home and immediately took to social media to reach out to Sierra's friends, desperately hoping that someone had seen or heard from her. However, to her dismay, there was no response. Hours passed, and there was still no sign of Sierra. Filled with worry, Sierra's mom knew she couldn't waste another minute and decided to call the police. Just an hour later, a concerned neighbor called Sierra's family and informed them that County Road 6 was blocked off. With their hearts racing, Sierra's family rushed out of their home to see what was happening. They were met by a chaotic scene surrounded by officers who refused to let them pass. The officers couldn't provide any information about Sierra, leaving her mom in a panic. She couldn't help but wonder if the police had found her missing daughter. The small town police officers, in their efforts to find answers, decided to seek assistance from the FBI. They made a promise to deliver any information they could as soon as possible to Sierra's family. Understandably, the family was unable to sleep and remained wide awake, contemplating the actions they should take. The next day, Sierra's mom and aunt refused to wait for answers and took matters into their own hands. Her mom began making calls to hospitals, desperately searching for any signs of an unidentified female. Call after call turned up nothing, leaving them feeling increasingly hopeless. However, a glimmer of hope emerged when a lead came in from Detroit, Michigan. They had heard news of a young woman who bore a striking resemblance to Sierra. This woman had been admitted to a hospital without any identification after managing to escape from a moving vehicle. The injuries she sustained were severe, with numerous broken bones. In an attempt to confirm her identity, a nurse asked Sierra's family to identify marks on her body. Sierra's mom mentioned that she had a scar on her calf and her belly button pierced. The girl in the hospital seemed to match Sierra's description, raising the family's hopes that they had finally found her. However, their hopes were soon crushed when they discovered that the girl in the hospital was not Sierra. It was devastating for the family to learn that it wasn't her, as they had invested so much hope and anticipation in the possibility. 
Later that morning, the police arrived at Sierra's house to provide them with an update on the events of the previous night. According to the police, one of the officers had discovered a broken cornfield nearby. As he parked his car and approached the area, he noticed signs of a struggle inside. Additionally, he came across a motorcycle track and decided to retreat without disturbing any potential evidence. It was during this retreat that he caught a glimpse of a reflection, which turned out to be Sierra's purple bike. Upon further investigation, the police found several items at the scene. These included a pair of male sunglasses, a pair of female sunglasses, a bloody sock, and a screwdriver. Based on these findings, the police explained that they believed Sierra had been abducted from that particular location. During the investigation, detectives thoroughly questioned Sierra's friends and family to gather information about her boyfriend, Josh. Through their inquiries, the detectives discovered that Sierra and Josh had been close friends since they were seven. Their friendship blossomed into a romantic relationship during their first year of high school, and they became known as a vibrant and fun-loving couple. One of their shared passions was skiing, and they often hit the slopes together. As high school came to an end, Sierra attended the University of Toledo while Josh enrolled at Bowling Green. Despite the distance, their commitment remained strong, and they frequently discussed the prospect of marriage. However, Sierra expressed her desire to prioritize her education before settling down, highlighting her dedication to her studies. Despite this, their relationship remained serious, and they navigated the challenges of a long-distance relationship. Detectives investigating the case discovered that Sierra had visited Josh's house in the early afternoon on July 19th. According to the information gathered, Sierra decided to leave Josh's house and return home at approximately 6.30 p.m. Concerned for her safety, Josh joined Sierra on her journey back to her residence, riding alongside her on his motorcycle. After traveling a few miles, Sierra insisted that Josh turn around and go back. She expressed her independence and desire to ride her bike home alone. Reluctantly, Josh agreed, and the two of them parted ways. Josh headed back on his motorcycle, while Sierra continued her journey on her bike. During the investigation, detectives came across motorcycle tracks in the corn stalks near Sierra's bike. This finding raised the question of whether these tracks belonged to Josh's motorcycle. The detectives could not ignore this potential connection and began exploring further to determine if there was any evidence linking Josh to the scene. Detectives quickly set up a command post to gather any relevant clues about Sierra's disappearance. It didn't take long for a promising lead to come in. A resident had come forward and explained that on July 14th, as he was driving on the roads, he noticed a motorcycle helmet lying on the side of the road. Intrigued, he told his son to jump out and grab the helmet, putting it in their truck. However, after hearing what was happening with Sierra, he decided to inspect the helmet more closely. To his surprise, he noticed red stains on it, which he believed to be blood. The helmet was found in the general area where Sierra's bike was in the cornfield. The detectives approached Josh to inquire about the whereabouts of his motorcycle helmet. To their relief, Josh was able to produce the helmet, confirming he had it with him. Furthermore, the detectives verified that Josh had returned home after interviewing his parents. This alibi ruled him out as a suspect in the case. Despite being visibly shaken up, Josh was never considered by Sierra's family as someone responsible for her disappearance. Detectives were determined to identify the owner of the blood-stained motorcycle helmet found on the side of the road. Recognizing the importance of DNA evidence, they decided to send it to the crime lab for testing. With anticipation building, the detectives patiently awaited the results, hoping it would provide a breakthrough in their investigation. Meanwhile, the news of Sierra's disappearance had spread throughout the town, and the community rallied together to search for her. Concerned citizens joined forces and organized search parties, combing through every possible area in the hopes of finding any clue that could lead to her whereabouts. The townspeople felt a deep sense of unity as they worked tirelessly to bring Sierra home safely. In addition to the search efforts, the community organized a candlelight vigil for Sierra at the local high school. The atmosphere was filled with grief, hope, and determination. Hundreds of people gathered, holding flickering candles, sending their thoughts and prayers for Sierra's safe return. Two days into the investigation into Sierra's disappearance, the police received a tip regarding a van that was seen speeding through the area. There were speculations that Sierra might have been taken in that van and possibly subjected to sex trafficking. 
the tipster provided the police with a license plate number associated with the vehicle. Following the lead, the police conducted an interview with the van's owner. It was discovered that the reason for the van speeding through the area was not related to Sierra's abduction. The individual explained that another vehicle had abruptly approached from behind, potentially a family member searching for Sierra, which startled him. In response, he instinctively sped off, creating a misperception of his involvement in the case. 48 hours into the investigation, no leads emerged in the search for Sierra. Her family found it increasingly difficult to maintain hope as each day passed. The chances of finding her alive grew slimmer and slimmer with every passing day. Despite their best efforts to remain optimistic, the grim reality of the situation was becoming harder to ignore. The police conducted a door-to-door -door search in their efforts to find Sierra. Eventually, their investigation led them to a farm not too far from where Sierra's bike was discovered. This particular property spanned an acre and consisted of several structures, including a small house, a trailer, and a large barn. The owner of this property was identified as James Worley. Upon arriving at the farm, the police initiated a conversation with James Worley. They questioned him about the day Sierra went missing, hoping to gather any information he might have regarding her disappearance. To their surprise, James stated that he had been out on his motorcycle on the day in question. However, his bike had broken down, leading him to lose a few items along the way, including a screwdriver and his helmet. This revelation left the detectives stunned, as these were the same items that had been found at the scene of Sierra's abduction. James inadvertently placing himself at the initial scene of the crime raised significant red flags for the detectives. The connection between James and the missing Sierra became increasingly suspicious, and the police were determined to delve deeper into their investigation. As the detectives questioned James Worley, something caught their attention scratches on his face. It was evident that he had been involved in a struggle. This discovery only heightened their suspicions about him and raised more questions. The detectives wondered if these scratches were the result of a confrontation with Sierra. The detectives returned to the police station after questioning James Worley regarding Sierra's disappearance. They wanted to conduct a background check on him, hoping to uncover relevant information. As they delved into his past, what they discovered sent chills down their spines. James Worley had a dark criminal history, which included a previous attempt to abduct a young lady 26 years earlier. On July 4, 1989, Robin Garter, aged 26, was preparing to attend a neighborhood picnic. Her mother was busy making potato salad and getting everything ready for the event. Robin thought it would be a good idea to go for a bike ride before heading to the picnic. Unfortunately, Robin did not have any water with her, and the heat was becoming unbearable. Robin contemplated turning around and heading back home to quench her thirst. Just as Robin was about to make that decision, she heard the sound of a car approaching from behind. Robin assumed that once the vehicle passed her, she would make her way back home. However, before Robin could react, there was an impact as the car collided with her bike. As the car collided with Robin on her bike, the impact sent her flying into a nearby ditch. Stunned and disoriented, Robin could hear the driver of the vehicle stopping and getting out. Concerned, the driver approached Robin and asked if she was okay, trying to assess the situation. However, the turn of events took a terrifying twist. Suddenly, the person who had hit Robin with the car revealed sinister intentions. Without warning, he struck her forcefully in the back of the head. Robin struggled to comprehend what was happening as the assailant placed a screwdriver to her throat, threatening her life in a menacing tone. The man ordered Robin to get up and get into his car immediately. The man, with a screwdriver pressed against Robin's neck, forcefully coerced her into his car. Once inside, he attempted to handcuff her. Despite managing to connect one cuff around her wrist, Robin resisted fiercely, preventing him from securing the other. She screamed at the top of her lungs for help, but the desolate cornfields offered no solace, as there was. 